Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Tuesday, May 27th, 2025. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. The Nevis Island Administration, through its Department of Physical Planning, hosted a geothermal energy forum on Monday, May 26th, as part of the Global Sustainable Islands Summit 2025. The summit is being hosted by Island Innovation in collaboration with the government of St. Kitts and Nevis. More in this report. The Island Geothermal Forum at the Malcolm Gishard Recreational Park brought together representatives of regional organizations, including the OECS Commission, CARICOM, Caribbean Development Bank, and international organizations, including the Inter-American Development Bank, to share their insights. James Elsmore, CEO of Island Innovation, an expert consultancy specializing in innovation, sustainability, and development, chaired the opening and welcome session on the topic, setting the stage for geothermal innovation in island nations. In preparation for this event, just two weeks ago, I was on the island of São Miguel in the Azores in Portugal, which already has 50% of its electricity coming from geothermal and further exploratory drilling ha is, is happening. Bringing experts from islands like this that already have the experience and understand the specifics of island economies is critical for the geothermal transition that is happening in islands like Nevis. And I would be amiss without mentioning Nevis's own Eustace Wallace from the Federation's mission to the UN for helping to bring this together, ensuring that the forum in Nevis today has come to fruition. The development uh, in geothermal that is going to be happening here isn't just one project, it's de demonstrating the political will necessary from the administration, from the federation, and the many other partners that are coming together to make this happen. Um, but most importantly, I think this project is going to represent the bold thinking that inspires other islands. And we'll see this from the many islands from around the region and around the world that are joining us here today to share their own knowledge and also learn from what is happening here in St. Kitts and Nevis. The forum also covered financing the future of geothermal energy. The speakers on that panel included Premier of Nevis and Minister of Public Utilities and Energy, the Honorable Mark Brantley. It's important that this forum that is focused on the issue of geothermal energy that this forum is happening on the island of Nevis. It's important because through nature, God's miracles, whatever one would want to say, some may say through sheer luck, we have a considerable geothermal resource on the island of Nevis, a resource which we feel, if harnessed, can be transformative, not only for this island, but for the wider federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, and indeed for our subregion. What does harnessing this resource look like? It means, of course, that we get clean, reliable energy. We get energy that we hope is significantly cheaper than the energy that we now consume, which comes from diesel. That we satisfy all of our commitments insofar as the fight against climate change is concerned. And that ultimately we transform our economy, powering our economy by energy. I think the opportunities, ladies and gentlemen, are truly endless. I think the, 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 this asset that we have and our capacity to, to market and bring that asset to market is absolutely incredible. St. Kitts is on board with us because St. Kitts obviously wants clean, green energy as well. The federal government is committed to this idea of a sustainable island state as are we here on the island of Nevis. And I feel that this is a glorious opportunity. The Honorable Conris Maynard, Federal Minister of Energy and Utilities and the Chair of the OECS Council of Ministers of Energy, was on the panel which looked at scaling up geothermal energy in the Caribbean, regional cooperation, investment and innovation. Minister of Environment in Nevis, the Honorable Spencer Brand, was on the panel which discussed how geothermal energy can impact climate resilience and energy security. Other panels looked at rethinking natural resources, sourcing energy and critical minerals for geothermal brines, geothermal pathways advancing sustainable development on islands, and infrastructure for integration creating a connected island energy future. 
The Island Geothermal Forum culminated with a field trip captioned the Nevis Experience, followed by further discussions and a closing reception. Meantime, the Global Sustainable Islands Summit opened with an official ceremony at the St. Kitts Marriott Resort on Tuesday morning, May 27th. The summit is addressing pressing challenges confronting island communities, focusing on water sustainability and energy nexus, agricultural resilience and climate adaptation, climate health interactions, and geothermal energy. Reporting for the Navis Newscast, I'm Donis Wilkinson Keynes. As part of the Global Sustainable Islands Summit 2025, Nevis will also host the Climate Finance for Sub-National Island Jurisdictions Forum on Friday, May 30th. The following is a notice from the Nevis Water Department regarding the disconnection of water services. The Nevis Water Department wishes to inform the public of the disconnection of water services for customers with high or overdue balances. Disconnection will commence on June 16th to 27th, 2025. All outstanding balances must be settled by Friday, June 13th, 2025. A reconnection fee of $150 will be charged to all disconnected accounts. All arrears and the reconnection charge must be settled before the services can be reconnected. Customers are asked to note that a fee of $1,800 will be applied to your account if your meter is tampered with. If damaged, an account an amount of $2,300 will be applied to your account. Reconnections will be done within 24 hours of payment, except between 3 p.m. on Fridays and 8 a.m. on Mondays. If you have any inquiries regarding your billing statements, visit the Nevis Water Department's main office at Solomon Arcade in Charlestown. To view your balance online or for assistance from the Customer Service Department, visit epay.neviswaterdepartment.com or neviswaterdepartment.com or send an email to neviswaterdepartment at gmail.com. Call 469-5979 or 469-5521 extension 5180 or 5181. Still to come, the ideas behind each of those words to come out in what we're doing this week and in what we're doing in our classrooms. Evaluate it. The details after this break. The people of Nevis have long remained connected to the gifts nature has bestowed. As an ambassador of this majestic island, it is my duty to encourage my people to nurture, preserve, and protect what makes us unique as a people and strong as a country. Welcome back. The Department of Education hosted the 2025 edition of the first Federal Cooperative Credit Union Limited Science, Technology, Engineering and Mathematics STEM Challenge as part of STEM Week 2025. The challenge had three rounds, easy, intermediate and difficult, and included three questions per round. After collaborating, each student had the opportunity to answer a question for his or her school. The Charleston Primary School, represented by Brian Taylor, Alana Jeffers, Divinant Ganes, Michela Bailey, Evandria Weeks, and Delicia Morton emerged the winners of the primary school's category. The Violet O. Jeffers Nichols Primary School placed second, and the Maud Cross Preparatory School placed third. Meantime, the Gingerland Secondary School, represented by Adjourney Hodge, Alison Kishad, Rejon Warner, Nyla Taylor, Latavia Powell, and Adelisa Mills, won the secondary school's category. The Charlestown Secondary School placed second, while the Nevis International Secondary School placed third. Principal Education Officer Londa Brown, in her remarks, spoke on the theme for STEM Week 2025. The theme for STEM Week is 
collaborate, evaluate, create, and solve. Now, I think when the team put that theme together, they didn't mean for it to be sequential. But they wanted the ideas behind each of those words to come out in what we are doing this week and in what we are doing in our classrooms. Evaluating. Students, they want you to question things. They want you to question yourself. They want you to question what you're learning. They want you to question the things in your world that ha sparked your curiosity. They want you to work together. Because once you are curious about something, once you discover something, once you discover problems, you are more than likely going to need help in solving them. They want you to solve problems. Figure out the things in the world that don't, don't sit right with you, the things that make you think, we could do better. And they want you to provide solutions for that. And they want you to be creative, innovative. Think of the new things, the things that go through your mind that you think, well, nobody has ever done that before. Be the person to do that. And so we are here this morning in an activity that demonstrates putting all of those skills together. STEM week officially began on Monday, May 19th, 2025, with the launch. On Tuesday, May 20th, a Math Infusion Day and a Science Symposium was held at NEPAC. Wednesday, May 21st, was Digital Literacy Day at all schools on the island. On Friday, May 23rd, the final event was held in the form of a STEM Expo at the Malcolm Gishad Recreational Park. Meantime, the Charlestown Primary School was also judged the winner of the primary school's category of the Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics STEM Expo. Participating schools were required to identify an environmental problem that Nevis faces and to develop a STEM project idea to solve or mitigate the issue. The student teams were then required to build a functioning model of how the solution would be implemented. Digital technology skills had to be used in the development of the project. Creativity, innovation, critical thinking, and presentation skills were on display. The Joyce and Lyman Primary School placed second, while the St. James Primary School placed third in the primary school's category. Meantime, the Gingerland Secondary School was judged the winner of the secondary school's category. Charleston Secondary School placed second while Nevis International Secondary School placed third. The Department of Education congratulated the schools for their exceptional STEM projects. At Friday's Expo, private and public sector organizations and vendors also operated booths displaying various professions in STEM, featuring the technology and skills used in those professions. The Department of Education thanks all who exhibited and visited the STEM Expo, the organizations, and the general public for their support throughout STEM week 2025 and that's it for this edition of the Davis newscast on behalf of all of us here at the department of information i am bronte swanstead hendrickson thank you for viewing <laughs>